This is the Penn GSE podcast, where you'll hear perspectives on education and social science from the University of Pennsylvania's Graduate School of Education. I'm Tom Ketchkamethi. Today on the podcast... I know that I could have gotten A's, but I got C's. Make sure you focus on seventh grade. Try your hardest because it really matters. Find out why thousands of eighth graders, yes, that's eighth graders, in Philadelphia are living with regret. Stay tuned. Clarice Haxton knows eighth graders. They're starting to think about what they want to be when they grow up or the future, right? Like, I want to be a football player, and if not, a rap star, and if not, maybe I'll be a DJ. (laughs) Like, there's a bunch of that. Back in 2003, Clarice taught at Turner Middle School in Philadelphia as part of the Teach for America program. That's when she became aware of a huge decision that faces every eighth grader in the city. Now, this decision is so important that for many kids, it can determine what they actually will be when they grow up, what colleges they'll get into, if they even get into college, or if they'll graduate at all. This life-altering decision is where to apply to high school. As a first or even a second year teacher, it's pretty unfathomable how you would know how to advise students about this, that there are over 60 high schools in the school district. You don't get any professional development as a teacher or anything, no paperwork or anything giving you information about the high schools. These days, Clarice is a fourth-year PhD student at Penn GSE, and she's researching this very topic for her dissertation. She's been interviewing students, their parents, and guidance counselors about the high school choice process. She's asking how kids figure out where to apply, who helps them make those decisions, where they get their information. Do you remember when you first started thinking about high schools? Um, seventh grade, I, we went to the high school fair that year. If you've never had an eighth grader in a Philadelphia public school, let's just walk through how the transition to high school works. It's a process similar to what happens in other American cities, like New York or Chicago. Basically, there are three tiers of schools. Special admission, which are the academic magnets, the quote, best schools. Citywides are kind of the second tier, and those are primarily vocational schools. All students are invited to apply to schools in these top two tiers, or to a school in the third tier, neighborhood high schools. Most of them do. But if they don't, or if they don't get in anywhere they do apply, there's a spot reserved for every kid at the neighborhood high school closest to where they live. All of the students, when I ask them the worst schools, they all name the neighborhood schools. And when I ask why, well, some of them know students who have gone there and say that they've been beat up. All the students there carry knives like this. Some of them are true and some of them are just generalizations of stuff that they've heard about the neighborhood schools. Um, I mean, they do have the fewest number of AP classes. Um, A lot of them are large. And the dropout rates are significantly, substantially, hugely different at the neighborhood high schools than they are at the other tiers of high school. Clarice has found, as you might expect, that the goal for most kids is to get into one of the top tier schools and to choose the one that's right for you, like picking the right college or career. For some students, making that choice is easy. They have high test scores, no absences, good grades. I have like basically all A's and one B. So when they meet all of those criteria, they basically have their choice of where they want to go, you know? So they're just thinking, do I want to stay close to home and go to Palumbo? Do I want to take the hour and a half scepter ride to go to Central? Do I want an all-girls school to go to Girls High? Like there are some other ones like Science Leadership Academy. Um, if they're interested in science at all, then they think about going there. So the name really matters to them what they think about. So those students, you know, those are the ones who will look online, go to the fair, ask teachers, talk to their mom, go on visits, the gambits. So that's a lot. (laughs) But not all kids seek out this much information. Maybe they're not that motivated. Maybe their parents aren't that motivated. Maybe their guidance counselors are being pulled in too many directions to be able to focus on high school choice. Often, these are the kids who have mediocre records in school. Average grades, average test scores, a bunch of absences, maybe a suspension. Clarice says even though these students really want to get into a good high school, they also tend to be realistic about their chances in this system. And um, it's really interesting, the ones who don't think that they're going to get in, so who say that I didn't try my hardest in seventh grade, or even though I knew about high schools, I wasn't really um, thinking about it, or uh, all of those students have the advice, you know, make sure you focus on seventh grade, try your hardest because it really matters. Never give up, keep trying. 
Clarice found that some low-achieving students apply to charter schools, and many white working-class parents will try to send their kids to Catholic school, even if they really can't afford it. Anything to keep their kids out of the neighborhood school. But there's no getting around it. Some kids will go there. 50%. Half of all students in the district go to the neighborhood high schools. 50%. That's about 7,500 students each year. And it's a lot of 13-year-olds out there in Philadelphia knowing that they'll be attending what everyone considers to be the worst schools. Now, to be clear, it's not that neighborhood high schools are inherently bad. There are dedicated teachers and administrators doing amazing work in these schools and students who work hard and excel. But these schools are operating in the most challenging circumstances. Kids who need more support, high teacher turnover, and less experienced teachers than in the top-tier high schools. The idea that you're taking students in seventh grade and giving them the opportunity or not giving them the opportunity to go to a good high school to get an education is what is really unjust about the system. I think that everybody who is concerned about equity definitely understands that. Exactly, and that's, that's the tension in the story. That's Ruth curran Neild. She does education research at Johns Hopkins University and in Philly with colleagues at Penn and a nonprofit group called Research for Action. She's working on a couple of papers with Clarice on high school choice. Ruth knows from her own research that inequity in Philadelphia public high schools is a huge problem. It's so complicated that, of course, it won't be solved by one piece of academic research. But she says that Clarice's dissertation will add another piece to the puzzle. One of the ways in which it adds a new dimension is that it highlights what the schools are doing to help students evaluate their choices and to negotiate the choice process. Pretty much the work that has been done so far has tended to look at the family side. So for example, I know in one of the schools that she's working in, there are these one-on-one meetings with guidance counselors. Um, In other schools, there's not. Ruth thinks Clarice's work could shine a light on the school side of the problem. And she says that might get policymakers at the top of the administration thinking in more creative ways about how to get information on high school choice to all students in the city. A seventh grader with average marks who wants to be a doctor will have a counselor who tells her, you need a high school with college prep, not just courses that'll train you to be a lab technician. Well, that has an impact on that kid's life. And so even though we're talking about In this instance, in a one-on-one conversation, those kinds of conversations are repeated thousands of times across the city. Is it the the, the (laughs) cure-all? You know, is information the cure-all? Absolutely not. But does it matter? Yes, it does. It matters a lot. And then do you have any idea, um, and it's okay if you don't, but any idea what you want to be when you grow up? A lawyer. The working title of Clarice Haxton's dissertation is The Role of Families and Schools in a High School Application Process, Information Access, Applications, and Admissions. She'll be defending it in May 2010. I just enjoy uh, arguing with people, and I find that I'm always, I try to always be right. The Penn GSE Podcast is a production of the University of Pennsylvania's Graduate School of Education and is produced by Hilary Frank. Trevor DeClerc wrote our theme music. I'm Tom Ketchkamethi. To learn more about this project and others, go to gse.upenn.edu.